Hi everyone, welcome to episode 7. So over the next few episodes we're going to be implementing this endless terrain system. Uh, the basic idea being that we only spawn in the chunks of the terrain which are visible to the player, and then as soon as they're no longer visible to the player we hide them, and uh, we also sort of dynamically change the level of detail based on how far away they are from the player. For this episode we'll just be getting the basics of the system in place, so that is the spawning and hiding of the chunks. Okay, so to get started, let's create a new c -sharp script called Endless Terrain or Infinite Terrain, something to that effect. And uh, we're going to want to create a couple of variables. So to start with, a public constant float, uh, just for how far the viewer can see. So I'll call this the max view distance, set that equal to something like 300. Uh, the constant keyword, in case you're not familiar with that, is just guaranteeing that this... Uh, value can't change at runtime. Um, next, let's get a reference to our viewer's transform so that we'll be able to figure out their position. Um, so I'll actually make a public static vector 2 here for the viewer position. Um, I'm just making a static so that we can easily access it from other classes later on. Next, we'll want an int for the chunk size as well as an int for, based on the chunk size and the max view distance, how many chunks are visible. So we can just call this the chunks visible in view distance. All right, so then let's make a start method. And uh, we want to fetch the chunk size from the map generator. So this is stored as a constant int map chunk size. Just gonna make this public so that we can access it. One potentially confusing thing about this map chunk size integer, and why I should probably figure out a better name for it, is that it has a value of 241, but as we discussed in the previous episode, the dimensions of the actual mesh that we generate will be one less than that, so our mesh is 240 by 240. So uh, in the endless terrain, we're going to want to say that our chunk size is actually map generator dot map chunk size minus one, and uh, then makes sense that the number of chunks visible in the view distance is just equal to how many times we can divide the chunk size into the view distance. So we can say that's equal to max view distance divided by chunk size. And uh, this is expected to be an integer, so we'll just round that to the nearest integer with mathf.round to int. So let's imagine that we've divided our game world up into a grid with each of the blocks being 240 by 240, so a single terrain chunk fits into a single block. If we place the viewer somewhere onto this grid, then what the chunks visible in view distance variable is determining is quite simply the number of terrain chunks around the viewer that we'll instantiate. Now, just to be clear for when we're programming this in a minute, when I talk about the position of a terrain chunk, I'm referring to its center as it would be in the game world. So if we make this 0, 0, then the chunk to its left would be negative 240, 0, and to its bottom right we'd have 240 and negative 240. When I refer to its coordinate, however, I mean its position divided by the chunk size. So on the left would have negative 1, 0, on the right 1, 0, and on the bottom right 1, negative 1, and so on. So with that said, let's create a method called update visible chunks. And what we want to do, first of all, is to get the coordinate of the chunk that the viewer is standing on. So we can say int current chunk coord x will be equal to mathf. We want to round this to the nearest integer of uh, viewer dot x. Uh, sorry, that should be viewer position dot x divided by the chunk size. And then the same story for current chunk coord y. It will be a viewer position y divided by chunk size. And then we'll want to loop through all of the surrounding chunks. So we'll say for int y offset 
starting at negative uh, chunks visible in view distance, uh, going all the way to y offset less than or equal to positive chunks visible in view distance, and then obviously just incrementing by one each time. Uh, we'll want to do the same thing for the x offset. We can then say vector2 viewed chunk coord is equal to a new vector2 with the x value equal to the current chunk coord x plus the x offset and the y value equal to current chunk coord y plus the y offset. Now, obviously, we only want to instantiate a new terrain chunk at this coordinate if we haven't created one there already. So we're going to want to maintain a dictionary of all of the coordinates and terrain chunks so that we can prevent duplicates. Before we do this, though, let's, uh, let's quickly create a public class to represent our terrain chunk object. And then uh, we won't worry about what goes in there just yet. But if we say using system.collections.generic to get our hands on the dictionary, we can say dictionary with a key of vector2 for the coordinate and then the corresponding terrain chunk as the value. We can just call this our terrain chunk dictionary and set it equal to a new dictionary. So now back in the update visible chunks method, we can say if the terrain chunk dictionary contains the key view chunk coord, then we're going to uh, we're going to do some stuff in here later on. But if it doesn't contain that key, then we'll want to instantiate a new terrain chunk. So we can just say terrain chunk dictionary dot add. We give it the key, which is the view chunk coord, and then we can say new terrain chunk. All right, so let's now pay some attention to our terrain chunk class. So one of the things we wanted to do for the moment is to instantiate a plane just to use as a sort of uh, visual placeholder until we implement this with the map generator. So let's create a constructor, public terrain chunk. And this can take in a vector two for the coordinate as well as an integer for the size. And uh, outside here, we can just keep a vector2 position. And we can say that the position is equal simply to the coordinate multiplied by the size. And since we're going to want to position this in 3D space, let's also create a vector3, just call this position v3, is equal to a new vector3 uh, with an x of position dot x, a y of 0, and a z of position dot y. OK, then we'll want to uh, instantiate a plane object. So let's just keep a reference out here, game object, mesh object. And we can say mesh object is equal to game object dot create primitive. And we want to create a primitive of type plane. And then we can say mesh object dot transform dot position is equal to our vector three version of the position. And we'll also want to set its scale. So mesh object dot transform dot local scale is equal to vector three dot one multiplied by the size. And since the primitive plane mesh is actually 10 units in its default state, uh, we can just divide this by 10 to give it the correct scale. Okay, so we're also going to want a public method so that we can tell the terrain chunk to update itself. And what I mean by updating itself is it's going to find the point on its perimeter that is the closest to the viewer's position. And it will find the distance between that point and the viewer. And if that distance is less than the maximum view distance, then it will make sure that the mesh object is enabled. And if that distance exceeds the maximum view distance, then it will disable the mesh object. So in order to find the point on the perimeter that is closest to another point, um, we can use the bounds struct. 
So let's create a bounds called bounds. And up here, we can say bounds is equal to a new bounds. And we'll pass in our position. And we also need a vector 2 for the size. So vector 2.1 multiplied by size. OK, so bounds has a very convenient method called square distance, which returns the smallest square distance between the given point and this bounding box. So we'll want to pass in our viewer position. And we can say that float viewer distance um, from nearest edge is equal to that, except we don't want it to be squared, so we'll get the square root of the square distance. All right, and we can say that whether or not this chunk is visible is determined by the viewer distance from edge being less than or equal to the maximum view distance. Okay, so we're going to want to create a, another method, just a public void set visible which will depend on bool visible. So we can just set the active state of the mesh object to visible. All right, and then of course from update, we're going to want to say set visible and pass in our visible bool. Then uh, in, the, in the constructor, I'm just gonna say set visible false so that the sort of default state of the terrain chunk is invisible, and then we let the update method determine whether it should then become visible. Okay, so up here, we're going to have to add uh, some arguments in for the constructor. So let's pass in the view chunk coordinate, as well as the chunk size. And then in this if statement over here, where we've said, if we've already generated a terrain chunk for this coordinate, then we're of course going to want to update that terrain chunk. So we can say terrain chunk dictionary, pass in our key, and call update. It would probably actually be best if I renamed this from update to something like update terrain chunk, just so that we never got confused thinking that that was uh, the, the update method that gets called by Unity automatically. And we're going to create one of those right now. Uh, each frame, we'll want to update the viewer position variable. You can say viewer position dot, uh, or rather viewer position equals new vector two, uh, pass in viewer dot position dot x and viewer dot position dot z. And then we'll also want to just update the visible chunks. Okay, so let's head over into Unity and let's add our endless terrain script onto the map generator object. We can create a little cube, call this our viewer and assign that to the viewer transform. Um, also just going to hide the mesh so it doesn't get in our way and let's press play. So the game window is interfering. Let's just put it in the corner and try this again. So we're getting all of these planes generating around the viewer object, which is nice. Um, but they are not disabling themselves as the viewer moves out of range. So the reason for this is uh, since we're only updating the chunks which are within this offset, uh, any chunks that were visible the previous frame, but which have since moved outside of the offset, won't be updated. So we're going to create a list of terrain chunks, and we'll call this terrain chunks visible last update. All right, and then before we update the newly visible chunks, we're just going to go through all of the chunks that were visible last update, and we're going to set them to be invisible. So let's say four into i equals zero, i less than terrain chunks visible last update dot count, i plus plus, 
and we can say terrain chunks visible last update i set visible false having done this we'll want to clear the list so we can say chunks visible last update dot clear and then we'll want to add any terrain chunk that is visible this frame to that list so we'll just need a little method in the terrain chunk class to find out if the mesh is visible. So let's create public bool is visible. And this just returns mesh object dot active self. All right, so if this terrain chunk is visible, then we'll want to add it to the terrain chunks visible last update list. So dot add terrain chunk dictionary and the coordinate. All right, so let's quickly try this again now. And you can see that the planes are updating correctly. Uh, it's a little bit irritating having them, having them all appear in the hierarchy here. I'd much prefer it if they just parented themselves to the map generator. So uh, let's add in a, a transform parameter to the terrain chunk uh, constructor called parent. And then we can just say mesh object dot transform dot parent is equal to parent. And then when we create the new terrain chunk, we can just pass, pass in this transform. Let's also try this out with a new max view distance, say 450. Save and hit play again. So everything's working very nicely. Um, admittedly, the result of this episode is not exactly overwhelmingly exciting, but it is a necessary step to episode 8, where things will begin hotting up as we integrate this with the map generator and introduce threading and whatnot. So until then, cheers.